right? But that's okay. Looks like the rain delayed construction a little bit this morning. Oh yeah. I always wondered what those guys were on the roof of the lightning storm. Braver and I would be up that high. Be like an artificial lightning round. Missed you all at breakfast this morning. Breakfast has started at the North Dining Room, so if you want to come to breakfast, very good. Service is good too. Lisa's ready and, ready and willing to serve you. And Johnny's cooking. And Johnny's cooking? Oh, okay, good. Uh, well, a reminder, why is it when they work, they work right outside that window with a machine? Yeah. Yeah. Competition and noise. Uh, Friday at 2 o'clock, we have the <clears throat> all resident gathering, so uh, we look for you to be there to participate. <clears throat> also, Thursday and Friday, Thursday at 10 o'clock, Friday at 10 o'clock, there is a training session for the use of the fobs. <coughs> they're, they're getting ready to install them. So this is the training that you've been expecting. And uh, are wanting to also. Now this is going to be the vendor. He had no participation in the decision to install the fobs. So to tell them they're not necessary. It's beyond his, his scope of work. So he's just got here to answer your questions and how it works and what it, what it, where it's gonna be and where it's gonna uh, take more than just a, a uh, your file to get in. We might have to, if it's an area that you can't, aren't authorized to get into, you need somebody else to get you in there. So, and I'm curious of where they're gonna put them all to, so. But to ask the questions concerning the file, the decision to make the file was made a long time ago, and I got a feeling that lawyers and insurance companies were involved in it, because more than just here have been installing that kind of network. When I went, I got friends in other areas, other states, that are in uh, uh, CCRCs, and they recently got files installed too, and they haven't had too much trouble. There's been a few people locked out, but it's been a minority. Um, so your goal after you train is to figure out how you're gonna make sure you leave your apartment with the fob in your hand. Or basically you can put it on your walker, your scooter, on, on, if you have a necklace, you can put your fob with your, with your pendant. Or, this is the one I, I love. Yes. <laughs> Here's a lanyard. I got that at the casino, and I'm not going to tell you how much it costs. <laughs> and also, I, I think I showed you this once before. You got their little bracelet you can put around your wrist when you leave your apartment. So, I mean, there's a lot of options. And if you're concerned about your neighbor, once you figure out what you're going to do, help them that they need help figure out a way that they can leave their apartment without having a, having been locked out. Because the front desk, I think in the first week or two, might be a little busy. Yeah. So, uh, and I just want to get re reiterate, August, August 5th, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Bro, bro, what's going on? Yeah. Bro, bro, The board will be able to listen to your praise and concerns. So this morning, the main topic. Next slide, I guess. Chris, tell them to turn it off. Oh yeah, turn your phones off or unmute them. Airplane mode. I'll get out of the way of the computer, the screen here. We're going to talk about the five objectives we presented earlier this year and reported on once. I'm bringing an update, and uh, you can see the five there, and I'm going to let Brent lead the discussion, and uh, we begin now with objective one. Where'd you go, Brent? Right here. All right, good morning, everybody. And so these are the uh, five objectives that we put together uh, back at the first of the year. And this was a joint effort between uh, the uh, management team and our Roro partners. Uh, and we tried to come up with the five 
uh, major objectives that would drive results here at Regency Oaks and uh, came up with, uh, with five. And so it's, uh, we're halfway through the year and it's our opportunity now to come back and share with you uh, what progress we've made, what you can look forward to over the next uh, five to six months. And uh, we're gonna start with objective one. It's to direct the construction projects on campus and keep residents updated on that progress. And so our two rose holders were Don Hamilton and Darwin Perez. And I think Don, you are the presenter here this morning. I am. All right. Next slide, please. Pro oh, thank you. You're welcome. Projects underway are completed. The gastro pub, town hall wellness clinic, and they're working on the salon. Four chillers, two in each building. The big thing that came up in June uh, is uh, the uh, fire and the rede remediation from June fire. The important one is garden fence. If we can keep it, keep uh, the wild animals out and the and the people that steal fruit. <laughs> the health center kitchen was was one that was a carryover from uh, 2021, and uh, they've been busy painting carports the last uh, two weeks. What's up next? Fobs. That, that's going to be an interesting project. Pavers for breezeway and walkways. That's going to be a nice one to, to see. Tarmac replacement and pedestrian lane. Painting stairwells and construction post-fire. <coughs> We've uh, uh, added uh, Wanda to the buildings and grounds team. Uh, we're getting uh, lots of activities. Uh, uh, people are happy to have the movies on 732. And uh, the Oaks articles and photographs, construction meetings, res resident attending uh, some of these things, especially once we've gotten a roof on the uh, new town hall. And uh, we, of course we have uh, Lou Weislagel, who is a permanent member of the, all the construction meetings. And uh, those are very, very interesting, especially as we get into some of the things that we're going to be able to do uh, day in and day out with a roof on the uh, town hall. Now, objective two. All right, thank you. So objective two is uh, reorganize the marketing committee and the ambassadors to drive new independent living sales. And uh, our uh, rose holders were Tony and Sherry. And uh, Tony's gonna be sharing the report today. Thank you. Um, previous slide said that we were going to reorganize the marketing committee and uh, uh, the uh, ambassadors. We're not really reorganizing, we're just strengthening. Now, next slide. This slide's speaking primarily about the ambassadors, the role of the ambassadors. Uh, the second thing is says new leadership. Uh, we strengthened the ambassadors. Uh, there's a new leader in the ambassador, Bobby Belcher, most of you know her. Uh, and that's what that's talking about. Um, they look and support, well, I'll get back into them and into that later, but relationship selling. The sales councils will identify, interest, uh, identify potential new residents and the uh, ambassadors follow up and try to uh, make them, get them more interested. But I'll get back into that. And there's also a guide program, which is uh, the directors of the various departments assign someone to be a guide for the new residents for the first few days they're here. Next. 91% uh, occupied, trying to raise it to 92. I recall earlier this year, we were below 91%. And uh, 
And so right now we're up to 91%, and we were below, and, and we're still trying to reach it to up to 92. Um, Brent gives weekly updates. Uh, if you can see the second quarter, we had a pretty good quarter. Um, and I'm sure we will too. The sales counselors and, and the marketing are really doing a good job. Uh, more outreach, more events, and that's where they're primarily the ambassadors. And sometimes some of us, the rest of us, I know one time I was asked to get involved with uh, a new resident, and I'm not an ambassador. And advertising, that's a tough call, and it takes a, takes a lot of thought about how to spend your, your advertising dollars. They are limited. You can only have so much in the budget, and you want to get the best advertising. And the marketing and sales committee comes in and helps on that. Next. Here are the two roles, sales and marketing committee, lead generation. And this is, this, this is where the strength of the sales and marketing committee can come in. And they do. They, they look over the, uh, the monthly statistics. They work with the director of uh, sales and marketing. They should be looking or will be looking into the marketing plan. They help the sales and marketing uh, department in developing new advertisements. They look over the advertising, make, is this really the message we want to share? Is this the group we really want to go after? That's the strength of the sales and marketing community. And as sales counselors identify really what we'd like to say hot prospects, people are pretty much interested, but they haven't made the final decision members of the sales and marketing committee can get involved and make phone calls or meet separately with them and help help get that generate that lead into an actual contract and they don't do the contracting obviously the ambassadors they've been doing a wonderful job and uh, then between the ambassadors the little the program i think it's the little uh, article that uh, that's given to them when they come in called the acorn i don't know probably none of you have seen it unless you know it because it's given to new people and it tells them where things are and what they're doing who to see and how the place operates and the ambassadors have been doing a great job and i think we've we've come a, maybe not a long way because i think we were fairly strong but i think we're even stronger now Thank you, Tony. Uh, objective number three is to implement the new meal of the day dining program to replace the bistro meal credit plan. And uh, our two presenters, uh, or two rose holders, were Ricky, who's not here today. Phil is going to be uh, substituting, so we're glad you're joining us. Uh, and then also, uh, Margaret, uh, thank you for your support. I just got called a substitute rose. This is awesome. Okay, so um, dining changes year to date. Basically, all dining venues are now open. Well, that says August 21st, but it was truly August 1st. So Monday, we, re we reopened um, for breakfast and lunch up in the north. The pub is now open. We will reopen uh, Breezeway, Bella Row, and Al Fresco, weather and construction permitting. Uh, we've started working with Pineapple Academy. The name is a little bit of a misnomer. The Pineapple Academy is really just onboarding and training on a digital platform. It allows for snippets of training, less than five minutes. So even with today's youth, where they have a very short attention span, we can give them a three to four minute training on their phone, at which point we'll get notified that they finished their training as well as everybody will have the same training, rather than Sam just training somebody the way she does, and then Ginger training somebody the way she does, we get consistent training throughout the program. Um, as well, it can be used on any digital platform, that's uh, phone, laptop, computer. We can take them all and huddle them together and have them all stand in front of each other in a circle on their phones, and actually be doing work rather than texting their um, loved ones. <laughs> Meal of the day plan, 
provides inflationary protection. We have, would you like to come up? Or you want to just keep rolling? I can keep rolling. Um, so meal of the day plan provides inflationary protection. Speaking towards that, the bistro plan, the price for the a la carte pricing, we have fewer than 70 people at this point remaining on this plan. Um, and the October deadline is coming up very quickly. If you are paying cash or charging or charging for a meal, sharing is allowed. It is only not allowed if you are using the uh, meal a day plan or bistro plan. Uh, there wasn't one more. There was one more. <laughs> And we're currently looking for contract addendum to formalize the change uh, for the meal plan in September. Thank you. All right, next up is uh, objective four. It's uh, short, uh, build resident engagement. And our two rose holders are uh, Andrea and Leslie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. All right, Leslie Resident Services. All right, so my voice is being heard and how we're working on that is we've added the question and answers column to the Oaks. So if you have any question that you're wanting uh, to be addressed by the rural board members, feel free to reach out to the Oaks and they can put it in and they'll work on an answer. We've added the question and answers for Tuesday talk to the 732 broadcast so everyone can hear the questions and feel like they are being heard. We continue to have a great turnout for our floor meetings to discuss about the meal of the day, reservations plan, continue to have Tuesday talk for our listening post, and our Friday resident only forum that we'll be hosting this Friday. We will have um, upcoming this month our weekly open tables with rotating department heads and rural board members. So you have again that chance for your voice to be heard. And we'll continue to post minutes and share outcomes. Um, we have minutes that are in uh, your libraries as well as the mailbox in your lobby. Next slide. So for residents belonging and purpose, anytime we have opportunities that residents uh, can be involved with and show their you know, great purpose that they have at Regency Oaks, we have our egg extravaganza, which is our large uh, spring festival that we have for our staff members and we invite their family and friends to come. We ask residents to get involved, to help participate. We have our, uh, our paintings that we have for our staff members, activities that we go on that our residents can get involved in. Uh, we continue to have our caregiver support group and our bereavement group. These are hosted by residents who are passionate about helping others that have gone through the same experience or preparing for something um, that for their being a caregiver. We have our back, we had our back to school drive where residents that are passionate about you know, helping the local community, helping their staff. We had our lovely um, donations of our pencils, folders, every school supplies we were able to pack backpacks and give them out to staff members that could really benefit from uh, the supplies that were given. Also at our Ukraine uh, support for children and we continue to do our Unsung Hero Award, which I believe is done three times a year, uh, the Weiss Logo Award, and our annual volunteer banquet to thank those residents who have given and shown their purpose here at Regency to help others at the community. Next slide. Life enrichment that we've added, we continue to always focus on our activities calendar to make sure that we're hitting all of our uh, well-being, our spiritual, physical, emotional, uh, impacts for residents. You continue to have the caregiver support group. We added on the night owl group, coloring group, your music night, getting out all those stress with when it comes to your coloring, making all those beautiful art pieces and showing off your dance move at our music nights. Movies in the Grand Lobby South and Channel 732. Our clothing swap that you've seen out here on the breezeway and our large monthly calendar that's beautiful to see. And we continue to have our suggestion box that are um, you know, throughout the community as well. All right, life enrichment uh, still to come that we are working on. We're bringing back our uh, My Life Stories, our Clearwater Historical Society, political candidates and forums, as well as arts and crafts show to come. All 
All right, thank you. Objective five. This is envision and engage in developing leading age technologies that will help the community gain operational efficiencies and market share. Our rose holder presenting today is uh, Judy Studebaker. Accomplished to date, we have uh, the sanitizing machines for the health center, upgraded the iPad for channel 732, added questions and answers to broadcasts, TVs in the dining reception areas, daily pay solar energy, Regency Oaks app, and the advanced communication details, which is electronic work orders, full count, dining point of sale, the reservation system, housekeeping and transportation radios. In progress is the WIZ, which is an electronic vacuum cleaner to be used in the open areas, new electronics in the new town hall, a spa, automated massage chair and emulsion capsule coming, the digital event boards in the dining lobbies, full count residential portal, online ordering and reservations, and an IT person on site and as of now, Teresa Ryle's daughter-in-law, Peggy Pickering, comes to uh, help people with their IT problems, and I have the telephone number if anyone would like it, or you can talk to Teresa. Remaining is paperless billing, electronic mail scales, a new phone system, upgrades to the in-house TV system, and improvements to status solutions. So, Status Solution is the platform that the community uses, uh, and it's a plug-and-play uh, platform. So it has a lot of different uh, items that you can plug and play. Uh, we use it for our emergency call bell system. We use it for the pendant system. We've used it for KDTV in the past. We've used it for our auto dialing. Uh, and so there are many more capabilities that we are able to add to the uh, plug and play component. And we are uh, negotiating with Status Solution now to see if uh, there are not other enhancements that we can add to that. They have some great additional programs. Okay, we'll now open it up for questions and answers. Yeah, we have one question, so raise your hand if you have a question. Here we go. Uh, my question is on the voting. Uh, are we going to have a box this uh, this time where we could put our mail in uh, votes rather than put it in the mail? Can I answer it? Yeah. Hold, hold on, Andrew. Let's get your mic. The Florida Legislature, you hear wisdom, has decided we can't do that. You have to use the mail for the mail ballots. But we are also going to have a bus that will go over the morning of the election. 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll have to sign up and um, you can go vote in person easily. But if you want to do a mail in, you're going to have to trust the mail. <coughs> August 23rd is the primary. And then in November, there'll be in the, the I think it's the 4th. So the bus will be there on the 23rd. It'll be there on the 23rd at 10 in the morning. And um, sign, you know, sign up and show up. Okay? <laughs> show up. Show up. <laughs> I heard uh, a rumor at dinner last night. Just another rumor. <laughs> that these new fobs might interfere with pacemakers. So if you could yeah. say no, that would be great. So I, well, that's certainly a great question that we ought to ask uh, Thursday or Friday. I cannot imagine that to be the case. It's the same fob that you've been carrying for seven years. So I, it's, I'm sure that is, uh, anyone have a fob? Can you look on the back and see if it says safe for 
use around? It says nothing. It says nothing. All right. So, great question. Let's be sure to ask that on Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. Margaret says she can't read it. No, it has numbers and. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Grant, does for new chillers, do they have a built in blackout protection so we won't get warm again next time the <laughs> power goes out? That, say that again. The new chillers, they have a blackout yeah. protection so when the power goes out that they stay on? So, or do you have a generator to go with? So, it? none of the chillers are on our emergency power. And so here at Regency Oaks in the independent living, we don't have any air conditioners uh, if we lose power. Now, in the last couple of instances, the power outage uh, has, has been off campus as opposed to on campus. We have priority, uh, we, if it happens on campus, we have the ability with the new electronics we added to go and uh, prioritize air conditioning over other power sources. But if we lose power off campus, it's an off campus issue and we, we're going to have to rely on, on the uh, power company, if that makes sense. Do you know if the fob is in any way connected to the electricity? If the electricity's off, are we locked in our rooms or out oh. of our rooms? Yeah, so all of the fobs are battery operated. The batteries uh, are good for about a year. They're just like your pendants and uh, uh, we will get a alert if your uh, fob or your uh, sign, your the fob at your door has begun to fail. And so they're all battery operated. So in the event of a power loss, they're still 100% uh, functional. Okay, Chris. Yeah. Chris, you have a hand. Hi, I just uh, heard some people talking and they said they figured out a solution if they get locked out. They're going to push their fob, their fob that they wear around their neck, and then somebody will find them, and they'll just wait at their door. Uh, so you can push the emergency panic button, and that way they don't have to go down to the front desk if they're in their nightgown or taking the trash out or something. Yeah. So, so ultimately, uh, she's sort of correct in that uh, if if you lock yourself out of your apartment, we're going to have to send someone up to unlock you. That's not the recommended solution. Let's make sure that we're not taking our first responders away from someone who might need emergency services and we could make a difference in saving their lives. Uh, but if you should lock yourself out, uh, one of the uh, more acceptable options would be to knock on your neighbor's door and uh, ask if uh, you could borrow their phone. All you have to do is call the front desk and, and we will respond. And do we still have do we have phones in the laundry rooms? No. 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 Okay. Libraries. Libraries. And the uh, activity room. And the activity room. So there are uh, phones in both the activity rooms and the libraries. That's a, another potential solution. Uh, Brian, on the projects that were completed or good in the process of being completed. Can you tell us the status of the outdoor kitchen? Is that going to ever be opened, or what is the problem that's keeping it from opening, or what are we doing with the roof on it right now? Yeah. Yeah. So as far as I know, there is nothing wrong with the outdoor kitchen. Are you aware of anything? No. So, so, so it doesn't get used. It's right now. It's because it's it's primarily because it's summer. Um, we don't think that uh, we'd have uh, many residents who would want to be out uh, taking advantage of that during the, the summer months. But ideally, we try to open that October and run it through April, the end of May. It's me again. Um, about the fog and the telephone uh, that, that we have in the rec hall and the like. Couldn't a phone be installed on each floor outside the elevators? So
So with our current phone system, that is, is not possible because we're at a port. And so, you know, all of you know that we are looking at additional, uh, at a new phone system and that new phone system, one of our objectives would uh, be uh, to have additional ports. Uh, so that, that's not capable right now, but certainly something we could look at once the phone system is replaced. Yeah. We got a, Don has a question right up here. Brian, I think we need to have a discussion. I'm surprised you didn't cover it. Where we were not able to reach the desk for, I don't know, a day and a half or so. I don't know how long. That was the case both in the South and North building. And I consider that a very serious problem because there was no way to call a wellness nurse. There was no way to call anyone with an extension. There was no way to call the dining room to make to talk to them or make reservations. And uh, it just seems to me that I wonder, you know, we don't have a contract expected. Uh, we're operating on a month by month basis without a contract. I would assume that, uh, I wonder, if we had a contract, would we have gotten greater response and service from Spectrum? Uh, were we at a disadvantage because we don't have a contract? But anyway, I hear that maybe it wasn't a Spectrum problem. It was some other vendor that was involved. But anyway, I, I hope this doesn't happen again because I think it's a serious situation. So uh, a couple of things. So the first thing, just generally speaking, so if we do have the phone system down, how would you, if in, in the event of an emergency, what would you do? Pull your call bell, push your pendant. So we wanna make sure that you know there is redundancy in our systems uh, and, and we want residents to be safe. And so there, the two systems are not tied together. One is status solution, the other is a, a spectrum. So that's uh, in, in the event that one system goes down, the other system is going to uh, pick up and become op or will be operational. In terms of would we have gotten a better response if we were currently under contract with Spectrum? Uh, we don't think uh, that was the issue. Uh, they responded pretty rapidly. Uh, and the other company that was involved, there were two of them, Coastal Communication, which does our wiring and Telco, uh, which is our phone uh, consultant that we're working with in managing these relationships. And so what actually happened is uh, there was a part that went down. Uh, it allowed us to uh, continue to make outgoing phone calls. That was not impacted, but we weren't able to receive any incoming phone calls. And so uh, all of you know, uh, anyone who's buy, tried to buy a washing machine or a new car uh, uh, or any appliance uh, the one thing that this world is really short of right now is chips and so uh, it's it's more of an issue of needing the uh, part and not being able to get it from the provider and so we did have to wait while that part was shipped in overnight uh, from somewhere else in the country and so it's uh, it's not ideal, but it wasn't a, I, we, to be honest, it just wasn't a, a lack of response from our vendor. Uh, our vendors uh, responded very rapidly and, and uh, did a good job in diagnosing the problem, uh, but uh, we, we had to wait on parts. Mm -hmm. Hurricane supplies. Hurricane supplies. Uh, what are the suggestion boxes that were mentioned? What do I find them? On the trip tables in the north and south. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Everyone hear that? Uh, the suggestion boxes are on the trip tables north and south. They're, they're activity suggestion boxes. 
They're not complete suggestions. <laughs> Thank you. Act, act, those are activity suggestion boxes. <laughs> I would like to address a couple of things that new people find here when they come. I'm not relevant to them. One thing is, I have no clue, still do not know, whom to ask questions. And nobody seems to know who, who, who to go to if you need to answer to a very simple question. I was told that you mentioned to me the receptionist is the person. Our receptionist that I want to share it or do not. One of those. Also, the white sheet that has activities listed for the day, namely routinely, have several items crossed over. I'm particularly sensitive to not being able to play bridge here. And I've been recruiting here. Important aspect for me was that I'd be able to play bridge every day three times if I want to. I play bridge three times all together in almost four months. And I do not know who has the right, who decides when to do something and who can not do this. Okay. So the, the front desk is the correct answer. Every single question should go through the front desk. And the reason for that is uh, you won't be able to catch a manager. If you call and try to get a hold of a manager and you call them at their extension, if they're doing their jobs, they're not in their office. And so that's a, just a waste of everyone's time. Call the front desk. If you need Darwin, call the front desk. He carries a radio, he carries a cell phone. We will contact Darwin, have him get a hold of you right away. Same goes for every single department on campus. Uh, if you need something, go to the front desk. If they're not able to help you, they'll uh, connect with someone behind the scenes who can help you. And that's the fastest way uh, to, to get a response. The front desk, they do a great job. They may not be area experts on every single department in the community. That may be an unreasonable expectation, but they absolutely know who to put you in touch with and they can, they can make that connection directly. In terms of bridge, I have no idea and I'm gonna turn it over to you. You may have to use that mic. Yes, I will call you after the meeting and try to hook you up with some bridge players, okay? A lot of them have been on summer break. Summer, summer break, yes. They'll be resuming in September, a few of them. But I'll, I'll give you a call, okay? Oh, we got another comment right up here. Follow up. I make a list of all the residents that are in charge of different programs on campus, and I give it to the front desk. So the front desk has that to know who the different people are to contact. <laughs> I hope there's some other bridge players in here that will meet with Mickey after the after the meeting this morning. All right. Anything else? Going once, going twice. Thank you very much for coming Thanks out. For coming.